from Larry Anglosado at Aviation Consumer Magazine. You know, as pilot in command, it's your responsibility to look after the passengers. And I learned a valuable lesson when one of them took me by surprise and lost a $100 hamburger in the middle of the New York Class B airspace, trashed a brand new interior. Ever since then, my go-to has been the Relief Band therapeutic wearable device. I've had good luck with the Relief Band, but I always thought it had sort of a clinical look and feel not made much better by its puke green color. That's why I was anxious to try the new relief band. It's the 2.0. It's got uh, more modern styling, an easy feature set, and of course a higher price tag. Let's take a closer look. Now when the relief band came out in the mid-1990s, it originally required a prescription, but that's not the case any longer. It's a wearable therapeutic neuromodulation device that electrically stimulates the median nerve in the wrist with an electrode that's built into the bottom of the watch-like transmitter. Now the median nerve is at the same location that acupuncture needles and therapeutic bands are placed when treating nausea. Now there are no real side effects, which makes the relief band fair game for flight crews. Now my stomach has a fairly low tolerance for aerobatics and I've used a relief band with good results. Now a relief band says the device is cleared by the FDA and like medicine it's not perfect. It's effective about 80 to 85 percent of the time. The relief band 2.0 is completely redesigned and closely resembles a fitness tracker. I sit next to a Garmin Vivo on a petite female's wrist. Now she dinged the relief band for being perhaps a bit too large but like others who wore it she liked the attractive styling. Relief Band has a patent for its NeuroWave technology and the 2.0 device has a latex-free rubber band with a built-in hypoallergenic surgical steel transmitter which has to sit in the location of the median nerve on the underside of the wrist. Relief Band says the new sensor is more comfortable on the wrist and the improved design is better for transmitting the current to the median nerve, but I found that the device just wouldn't provide adequate therapy without coating the skin with the supplied conductive gel. The Relief Band 2.0 may look like a fitness tracker, but that's about it. It has a sunlight readable LED display and two function keys. There's a battery charge status indicator in the lower right of the display, a 10 setting intensity indicator in the center of the display, and a therapy indicator at the top, which verifies that the device is transmitting. The bottom bezel key is for power, and the top one adjusts the intensity of the sensor's output. Now the old model uses a couple of CR2025 lithium batteries, but the new 2.0 is rechargeable and the specs say it will last 17 hours when transmitting at the mid-intensity level. It uses a unique magnetic 3-pin connector with a USB plug on the other side. It's too fragile for my manhandling. I broke one of the magnets out of the housing. The new Relief Band 2.0 has a list price of $175 and that's a sizable increase from the older Model 1.5 which is street priced at around $95. Now you can read a full report on the relief ban in the March 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. Reporting for Aviation Consumer, I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.